Spicy tuna crispy rice is the perfect bite-sized appetizer. Crispy rice sushi pieces topped with tangy spicy ahi cubes and drizzled with umami packed unagi sauce make this a recipe that you have to try. So stick around. Aloha mai kako, my name is Rel and welcome to my kitchen where I like to share all my favorite Hawaiian and local recipes. And today we'll be making spicy tuna crispy rice. So, so yummy and so, so easy. You can customize it to how you like it, but this is my way that I like to make it. First, we're gonna make some sushi rice. So you'll need sushi rice or honestly, what I like to use is just regular medium grain white rice, the same kind of rice that we eat for dinner and things like that here. So you'll do that, rinse it and you'll cook it. I like to cook it one to one. So one rice cup of rice to one cup of water. I've done that already so we don't have to wait. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna get that rice and you're gonna take it out from the pot. So fluffy white rice like that. We're just gonna put it into a bowl and we're gonna turn this into sushi rice because right now it's just regular old rice and nothing is wrong with regular old rice. But if you wanted to make the sushi rice just like this, the rice cakes, you can. <laughs> Bonking it around. Okay, rice is out. Now, in order to turn this rice into sushi rice, you need like, it's a sauce. I don't know what you would call it. So either you can buy seasoned rice vinegar that already has everything together, or you can make your own. And if you're gonna make your own, what you'll do is you'll get a heat proof bowl cause we're gonna zap it in the microwave real quick. You're gonna take plain rice vinegar, put that into the bowl. And along with that, you're gonna add some sugar. Regular white sugar is fine and then some salt. And that's all you need to make sushi rice. And like I said, you totally can buy the seasoned vinegar that's already made if you want. And then you're just gonna toss this in the micro for like 30, 45 seconds, just so that the sugar and the salt dissolve. So I'll be right back. All right, so when it comes out of the micro, that vinegar smell is really strong, but don't worry, you won't taste a lot of that in there. And all you wanna do is stir it up so the sugar and salt are fully dissolved. And you're gonna take that mixture and all you're gonna do is pour it over the rice like this. You'll take your rice spoon and all you're gonna do is kind of fold it in. The traditional way, they'll like fan it to help cool it down and to get all of that to get absorbed. Whoops, try not to make a mess. To get absorbed into the rice and get that extra flavor in there. And that's how you get sushi rice. So super simple. And you're gonna let that set for a bit. And while that's sitting, we'll make the next part. All right, now we're gonna make the spicy ahi sauce. So super simple. If you like spicy, you can totally add more than what I have here. If you don't like spicy as much, kind of like me, then you can keep it toned down like this. So the first thing you're gonna wanna get is some QP mayo. This is a Japanese style mayo. If you don't like this one and you prefer regular mayo, by all means, you can get it. This one has a little bit more of a, I wanna say sweet. I don't know if that's the best description of it, but yeah. A couple of tablespoons of this, put that into a bowl. Then I like to use sriracha, but if you rather use some other um, spice sauce, you can. And I don't use too much because my spice tolerance isn't that great. <laughs> but we'll go ahead and add that in, along with some shoyu. Shoyu is Japanese style soy sauce. It can be found in the Asian aisle at most grocery stores. Can't find shoyu, you can use regular soy sauce, that's fine. I use the low sodium one. Watch the salt a little. And then some sesame oil. Sesame oil is a pretty powerful flavor, so you only need a little. But of course, if you like that, you can add a little bit more. And then you'll mix that up. And this is what's gonna make the sauce. Just like that. So yummy. So we'll set that aside as well. And of course, for spicy ahi, you need some ahi. So you wanna get sashimi or sushi grade ahi. You can find this at most grocery stores. 
I washed my hands and this is for me. So you can totally put on gloves if you'd like. So usually like poke, you would do like three quarter, maybe an inch cubes. Those are kind of big. But for these, because the rice cakes are smaller, I like to dice these up in smaller pieces. So to do that, all I'm really gonna do is cut thin strips like this. And you wanna try not to saw back and forth for ahi. You wanna do like single long strokes like this because it's such a beautiful fish. You don't wanna damage it. So as you go one stroke forward through and one stroke all the way back to cut through. Forward back, one forward, and one back. Usually gets you through all the way. After you slice them into slices like this, then we're just gonna go back the other way so that you can make little dices. If you like this video, feel free to give it a like down below and don't forget to subscribe to this channel by hitting the red subscribe button down below. And don't forget to hit the notification bell so you can be updated every time I post a new video. So long single strokes like that. And once they're cut up, <laughs> it's a little bit harder to keep them in to stay still. Now, what I like to do is take about, I don't know, a fourth of it and kind of tip it to its side like this and cut it one more time. Cause otherwise you still got pretty large cubes. So when you're done, a cube is about this size. Actually, that's two pieces. <laughs> so bite size like this where, so it's, half almost a quarter of the size that poke pieces would be um you can do large pieces for the poke uh, like poke style but i just think it's too big to get these like bite size bites that you include the rice in it too whoa this one kind of fell apart sorry sushi chefs if i'm not cutting this great all right so the ahi will go in here so bite size pieces you can kind of break it up let me go rinse off my hands real quick too, sorry. All right, so we've got the ahi and now we're gonna drizzle in that spicy sauce. So I like to start with a little first and see how it goes. So you just kind of drizzle that in, maybe two spoonfuls at first. You can always add more, but you can't really take out. So I start with less first. And then you're just gonna toss that in like this until everything is well coated. If you like it really creamy and a whole lot of sauce on it, you can totally add the whole thing. And then, so that's the start of it. But what I like to also add is some green onion. Looks like this. Here, we tend to use the top part only. I know a lot of places use the bottom of the green onions too, but eh, for me, I like to just use the top. And then all you have to do is hold them together and make small slices like this. Because these are bite-sized pieces, I try to keep them really tiny like this. And you're just gonna run your knife over it. And you only need a little bit. Like more, put more, you like less, put less. If you don't like green onions, you can leave it out. That's the great thing about recipes. Speaking of recipe, the recipe instructions and ingredients will be listed in the description box below and you can get that there. And you can even click over to my blog and get the printed version as well. So now that we've cut that up, we'll just add that to the ahi like so. And then you'll just give it a gentle stir to mix it up. So that's the spicy ahi, and we can let that sit and go while we make the rice cakes. All right, now that our sushi rice has sat for a bit, you can see it soaked up most of that um, sauce that we made. Now we're gonna shape them into the rice cakes. I like to use this little doohickey here. It's a sushi mold that you can get on Amazon. They sell them here at our grocery stores. It's just a plastic uh, mold but the rice is really sticky. So you do wanna make sure that you get this wet first. These ones make a little bit bigger sizes. If you don't have one of these, don't worry about it. You totally can make it with your hands. You can roll it in a ball and then shape it like a rectangle. But I like using these cause it's quick and easy. So after you get some water on it, which I forgot to do, 
hold on again. So like that, you'll just run some water over it so it's not as sticky. Um, I made a smaller batch of this, so probably half. So this can make about maybe six of them. This is like a cup of sushi rice. Then all you're gonna do is scoop it into the mold and you wanna make sure you pack it. Reason being is you want the rice to stick together. Otherwise, when you try and fry it, it's just gonna fall apart and that's no fun. So you'll fill this up pretty much to the top like this. Kind of spread it out with the rice scooper and then you'll take the top and you'll just put it on like this and just push it down. And then I kind of like to give it a shake just to make sure everything is nice and fitted in like that. And then what you'll do is you'll take this top piece off. There's little doors on it and I'll show you how to use that. But you'll take that top part off and you see how it's shaped. This one's not as packed. So I'll put it back down a little bit and kind of pack it down a little more and then take the top off. If you didn't put the water, they might stick. And then all you have to do is flip it onto a plate like this. That bottom piece comes out like that. And then here on this plastic piece for this one in particular, there's a little door here. And what that does is so you can push it down to kind of pop the rice out. And then all you have to do is take it out like that. And you got beautiful sushi. They're kind of usually stuck together like this. So all I do is take this spoon and kind of just separate it like that. So that, I'll do the other ones and I'll be right back. All right, now that we've got the sushi rice, made six of them, um, like I said, I did the smaller batch, so that's fine. You'll let them cool a little if it's not completely cool. They're still pretty fragile. So at this part, I don't really like to use the tongs because they might fall apart. I like to use my hands for this. And I just wanna make sure they're a little wet so your fingers don't stick to it. So to the pan, I've added my cooking oil of choice. You can use whatever one you want. And then all you're gonna do is you're gonna set the sushi into the oil and you're gonna give it a fry. And even that, see my fingers are already starting to dry. I'm gonna get my fingers wet, I'll be right back. <laughs> like so. And then we can put the rest of them in. Be gentle because they can fall apart at this stage. And you'll just let it fry for a couple of minutes on each side until golden brown. And I'll be right back to show you what it looks like. All right, one little thing, if you happen to notice that your sushi rice is starting to spread apart, which it happens. Like this guy, top shape, he's not gonna fall apart. But these two weren't packed super good. So what you can do is kind of squeeze them together like this to kind of help, you know, firm them up. Because when you flip it over, you wanna try to keep them together as best you can. So just go with the tongs and give it a little smush to kind of stick them back together like that. And then, so it depends how crispy you want it, right? Oh, look, I'm over here talking about how great this guy is gonna be. You can't hold them in the air while you talk. You gotta just flip and go because they're sensitive like that. <laughs> so anyway, depends how crispy you want them. For example, this one, you can just flip it to the side. If you can see, I'll just kind of turn it to the camera this way. If you can see, it's just, lightly crisp. If you want it more crisp, by all means, you can. Try your best to gently, once you have two or three sides crisped up, it'll stick together a whole lot better. And if you lose some like that, don't worry about it. Put it on the bottom. There's a little bit of a learning curve to this. And you just flip that one. See, this one's a little bit more crispy than that guy. One last one, come on. Oh. Part of it is that there isn't as much space in here to turn things. Stick it back together and give it another go. There you go. And then you'll crisp them up on that side and you'll keep going. Okay, so a couple of troubleshooting tips for the rice. One, I've come to realize that the rubber coated, um, I was gonna say spatula, tongs, they're slippery. So while I'm trying to grab it, it's nice that it's not gonna scratch my pan, but while I'm trying to grab the rice, it's sliding out. So I switched it over to the regular metal tongs and it's a lot better. And these are bigger so I can hold more of it. Number two is I kind of rushed the rice. It was still a little bit warm when I pressed it. If you let the rice cool completely while in the shape that you mold it, it'll stick together a lot better. So part of it, that's why I struggled a little bit with this. 
but live and learn, right? Okay, so once the rice is done, so you can go anywhere from this to like that, totally up to you. Shake off the excess oil and see, now it sticks together no problem because you have three, four sides of it fried and stuck together. So you'll take that out and you'll put it on a napkin to drain the excess oil. You still don't wanna like throw them around because they still are, you know, a little fragile. But you wanna try and drain off. Rice absorbs a lot, so you wanna try and drain off as much of the oil as you can. Nobody wants an oily rice cake, right? Also, part of it, again, is the hot pan, the hot, um, hot plate, because it doesn't, I don't know, I feel like it doesn't disperse heat as well as if you were to do it on the stove. I have an induction plate, but it's so loud that it's hard to um, cook with. And this one kind of seen its days, but maybe while it cools. All right, so what you're gonna let it do is cool down just a bit because you don't want it to cook the spicy ahi. So let it cool just slightly, we'll top it and I'll show you the secret ingredient to put it over the top that makes it taste so, so good. Be right back. All right, now that your rice cakes have cooled down a bit, I kind of smooshed them down a little because some of them formed peaks, so they weren't sitting nicely. So if you kind of just hold the top and kind of like smush them down, then they'll stay. Usually they stay nice and rolled, but you know, ah, so it goes. And as you can see, we have an array of <laughs> skin tones here, just like in Hawaii, right? You've got the light, the light tan and the dark tan people. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna top it with that ahi that we made. So just spoonful over the top. Like so. And you see how the smaller pieces just make it a whole lot easier to manage. Had you had those big regular size poke chunks, it'd be a little bit harder. And if you have extra, you can eat it as a snack. Put a little more, put a, oh boy, I was doing so good. All right, now the game changer secret ingredient that I like to put over the top is unagi sauce. You can find this in the Asian aisle at most grocery stores. It's an eel sauce. It's a sweet, I don't want to say teriyaki, but the consistency is a thick sauce. Um, if you put it in the fridge, it'll be a lot thicker. And you're supposed to store it in the fridge anyway, I think. Yeah, shake well before using, refrigerate after opening. I would recommend putting it in the fridge before you use it the first time, but totally up to you. And then all you have, whoa, not like that. <laughs> but all you do is drizzle that over the top. We'll just add that into, make it look like that's what we were trying to do. So small squeeze, drizzle over the top. And this just balances out that spicy tangy flavor with this like sweet and salty, it's so, so good. This is the kind of sauce that they use in um, like shrimp tempura rolls. These are best eaten fresh. Obviously the poke needs to stay cold. Um, so you wanna eat it right after you make it. I, I wouldn't recommend putting it in the fridge. You can, but then the rice really dries out and things. But if you like this recipe and you want more recipes like this, then check out this video here. And until next time, ahui ho! Mm -hmm.